Let's go into a little bit more of detail of those three services, S3, CloudTrail, and Identity Management, to understand what do I need to do to get logs from them into Curator, and how do I monitor what is actually happening there. So if we go to S3, we have three buckets. For example, we want to monitor the logs for uh, this bucket that I created, Jose Bravo bucket. One important thing is that if you go in, into it, notice that in the uh, properties, you need to select, which is not selected by default, this object level logging. In other, in other words, you want to collect logs from everything that is actually being done on that particular bucket, which, as we saw before, has a folder and some uh, content in it. But where are these logs created? Well, first, they are created in CloudTrail which is the internal AWS login. And here we can see the recent events. We can click here and see all the events. And you can go, for example, we were listing the buckets and you see the entry for it. Uh, everything is an API call and everything gets actually logged. You can see more details of it, uh, you know. Uh, and I will reset my router to change my IP address in here. But here's the event ID for all that. And we, you can actually see the events into more detail. These are in JSON format. And the beautiful things is that we're going to be sending these. I actually already did this, but let me show you the end results of this. Uh, these are, this is what we want them. We want all these events into uh, Curator uh, so we can actually have rules that work. Notice that everything gets nicely parsed. Uh, so all you have to do is that you can create rules as you do with any other uh, event a uh, log source in uh, in into Curator. Let us we'll we'll show you how we configure all these. But let's actually go back to uh, AWS. But to get logs, n they don't come automatically. At least not with the level of details that uh, any security person will want them. So you need to create a trail. So if we click here, view trail. We already created a trail for the region US East, North Virginia, for the, uh, 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 and, and we put it into the S3 buckets that we created, which is called, in my case, uh, J Bravo AWS log. Understand that this particular name is important because there will be a URL to access this particular object. Well, this number has to be unique. So if you put here AWS logs, chances are that somebody already chose that name and you won't be able to actually do that. So you have to put the right prefix that uh, indicates your company. And that also gives you a sense of the security that you need to have around these because everything, like like contrary to what you have in your company, that you have a VPN and an and internal network and some security, here everything has a URL. And if you grab the URL and the right permissions, you can actually see what's uh, in that object. We can actually actually go into what we define for that particular trail and basically we see that this is a read-only uh, trail that we are creating to monitor the Jose Bravo bucket. So anything that anybody does in there uh, is actually going to be created because we set up a trail for it. The next uh, service that we are going to be talking and showing today is EC2. Again, a fancy name for virtual machines. And as you can see, I have an instance running, which are, we are, we are going to we are we are collecting logs from. Uh, but uh, you can actually go and launch your instance. And notice that these are free eligible. And we actually launch uh, this one, the first one, the free tier eligible for it. But you can, you know. Let's say even if you go here and you're gonna uh, select that one notice that this one is free but you can have you know machines with 96 virtual cores and 384 and this ain't gonna be free you're gonna get a bill for it so again think of the bad guys compromising your credentials and launching powerful machines for whatever they want to do but we have an instant already running, which is this one. So 
couple of things important in here. There's an instance ID that you will be actually uh, using. Uh, the zone that it be belongs to, the type is that small uh, type of machine. But notice that there is a public IP address for that VM, and there's also an in a private one. So this is the one that you will use to communicate within AWS with another instance to do the internal networking and don't be charged for outgoing traffic, while this one is the, the public uh, for, for outside. So we actually, now that we have this uh, instance uh, uh, created, we can actually even uh, log in into it. But you will notice that when you are creating your uh, instance, your EC2 instance, uh, by the way, those options that you saw in there, they're called AMI, Amazon Machine Image. And this is just a fancy name for an ISO pre-configure ready to work in the AWS environment. So if you want to log in into that VM image, the user EC2-user, that's a public IP address uh, that I'm going here from my Mac, and then I need to specify the file, and actually on that directory, where I downloaded the private key, and you need to actually provide that credential in order to log in, and here I am, you know. I'm in that, uh, in that uh, virtual machine. And all these things are actually being logged and sent uh, to Curator as well. The other service that we are going to be talking in this uh, introductory part is Identity and Access Management. And here is, for example, what I use to activate my multi-factor authentication to protect my, uh, my account. But notice that I also created some uh, groups one is for other S3 employees, and this is the, uh, uh, the read-only access group, which you'll see why I created that in a second. Uh, we also created uh, users and assigned them to groups. Uh, we we created a user for, uh, for Mutas, made a member of that group, and we created a user account called Curator, and that's the one that has the read-only access to retrieve the logs from CloudTrail into Curator. When you create this user, again, you get a secret, okay? So actually, we can go in here and see here on security credentials. Uh, that's the access key ID, and there is a secret. I'm not actually uh, showing it here, but when you create the account, you get the chance to actually save that uh, that particular uh, credential, and that we're going to use when we will configure Curator to retrieve uh, the logs. And there's also role-based access, and we created a role that we actually uh, assign for the AC2, EC2 uh, for the. Uh, instance and this is actually a, a way of combining instead of having to create a individual uh, groups and, uh, uh, and, and, and assign an individual you can create a role and com that has a set of uh, larger attributes this is standard identity management business and then you you by assigning the the role that applies to brings all those objects into that particular uh, uh, in this particular case, a virtual machine. So if we if you if we need to change the password or, or parameter, I'm, let's say we have 100 uh, virtual machines, by just making a change on the role, then we don't have to go individually into every one of those VMs. So standard identity management access business. And to assign that role to that virtual machine, what you need to do is go into the actual instance of the virtual machine one that I have is this one in here and you go into actions instance settings and here attach replace identity and access management role and here I selected that role that we created and that you know completes uh, the picture now let me go into curator to show you what you need to do to retrieve those those logs. If I go into log sources, I'm going to show you what I did on mine. 
let me sort these by uh, creation dates that shows the one for today is AWS we see that we are uh, retrieving uh, last event time was actually today so let me actually go and edit the configuration to show you what we did I'm not sure what I'm getting that warning but uh, the, the the log source name you specify whatever name you want a description in here you select the pull down uh, Amazon AWS CloudTrail and if you don't get that thing from the pull down it's because you might not be doing auto updates there is a video that I show how you manually install that in case that you don't have auto updates running and I'm going to put a link to it in the video description and when when I did the video for collecting umbrella Cisco umbrella logs which puts the logs into an S3 bucket uh, I'll show how you install that manually so uh, the protocol configuration is uh, this one that's standard you don't need to do anything here the log uh, source identifier put whatever name you want the signature is I took that by default the region I put the region I'm using which is US is one the bucket name is the bucket that we create to collect those logs precisely that one the endpoint URL is the same and that's uh, default the parameter the authentication is the uh, access key and secret key and this is the access key that we saw for the curator user we created and here's the secret key that got that I copied when the account was actually created as well that uh, directory prefix is actually we, we got this by going into the cloud tray logs and getting this sequence let me actually show you how we did that if we go into services s3 and go to the AWS the, the bucket that we created for the logs we see that the next entry is AWS logs if we go down that's that number that again begins with 14 and ends with 13 and underneath it we got cloud trail the region US East and that's it that's uh, the, the application knows how to pull it up from here so the file pattern is the standard the, the, these are our JSON files that are compressed with gzip and the event format is uh, again that that standard one Im very important thing is that you need to every time you go in here and edit this you need to actually sp specify that you want to automatically retrieve that uh, otherwise you will not be getting the logs I put the recurrence to one minute uh, I believe that the default is uh, 15 minutes or something like that uh, in order to get my logs uh, faster and I that that's all I did by just doing that I was able to get all the logs into uh, into curator on the log activity you see we are even getting some logs as, as we uh, we've been uh, talking if we go back in time you know that's 45 minutes we're gonna see more events uh, of everything that happened we within AWS I do not lose visibility into it and any one of these events we can actually go in any one of them they had been properly parsed so we get the username and they have a different name in, in, in AWS so everything is actually retrieved from the JSON parameters in here uh, so we can have rules that work on it more on that and attacks and, and other resources in the subsequent 